Welcome into Fantasy Film Ball. My name is Dill, that's Matt, and this is a show where we turn movies into sports, and sports is just something that we don't talk about. However, today's the day. We're finally here. And I know I just said we don't talk about sports, but this is honestly my Super Bowl. Matt, how do you feel? Like a cross between Super Bowl Sunday and Christmas morning, this is the day I look forward to every year. I care more about nominations than I do ever, ever about the winners. This, Same. to me, this is better than the winner's night. This is what we've been waiting for, guessing all year long. From here, it's pretty easy work to... Well, it's not easy work to figure out the winners at all. But it's more exciting, I think. There's so many more variables. I have no idea what's going to happen. Did you sleep well last night? I slept horribly. Um, I didn't sleep the best, but I've slept worse. Uh, I When I woke up about an hour ago to get ready for this, I was like, Oh, I don't want to be awake. And then I remembered, it's nomination morning. I got to. It's There's so much that could happen, like you said, because, yeah, wins are super cool and interesting, but I feel like if you get less than, like, 18, 17 right on winter day, you're just not paying attention. While nomination morning, you could be super involved and super invested, and you could still not score well. Exactly. There's so much that's up in the air, especially this year. It feels like there's so many categories that we don't know anything about uh there's so many things that are just throwing us completely for a loop there's nothing like best actress last year where it was actually just complete chaos because everywhere was nominating five different people Mm -hmm. but for the most part the thing that concerns me is that there's always like three or four solid ones and then one that i just have no idea what to do with in every category and that's definitely got me a little bit worried but less worried than i am just excited i think this is so much fun um but i mean for for the purposes of us doing this we're gonna be reacting to a list of the nominations and not to the video usually i'll watch the live stream but just because of the the complications of us you know living in separate countries uh and not being able to exist in the same space it's so hard to do a a live stream together yeah watch it come through so uh i'm i'm just excited to to see how it is and then i'm gonna go back afterwards and watch the uh the live version of it oh i definitely am as well i i always love watching the live streams but like you said it's kind of hard to do that and i'd much rather us talk about it live here then watch exactly. it and then come back and be like okay well when i saw x get nominated i was like oh my gosh and then when i saw y got snubbed i was like what uh here no, you can exactly. actually get these our reactions are authentic. these are authentic exactly. reactions first takes okay before we get into it what are you predicting to be the nominations leader this year see that's a good question because i did this the other day and my total i was kind of surprised by it. i had three films time with eight nominations and that seems low to me so i'm expecting something maybe to go astray because i have everything ever all at once the banshees of anishirin and elvis all getting eight which i could see banshees i could see elvis i could see everything everywhere going higher but i could also see elvis or banshees maybe losing one along the way mm-hmm yeah, my nominations leader, I'm a bit more confident in everything ever all at once than you, as I have been all year long. Um, I've got it at 10, followed by Elvis at 9, and Banshees of Inishirin at 8. So that's currently my nominations tally that I've got. But I could see everything everywhere getting up to 11, maybe. I, I think it would max out at like 11. That's the max. But at this point, I don't know. I'm feeling pretty good. Unless we see a wild overperformance for the Fablemans or a wild overperformance for... I don't think Banshees can overperform above eight. Uh, So maybe Elvis could overperform. Are there any films today that you could see like really overperforming or on the other side really underperforming? I guess going off of what you just said, I could see Banshees getting up to 10. I don't have any cinematography or editing, but those are two where I see it right now at like 7th. So it easily could jump mm. in with an overperformance. But going on the other side of films that maybe aren't in the upper echelon of overperforming, I have the Batman getting four. Uh, I know that's not a lot, but nice. for a movie that's not competing in a picture, that is a pretty good haul. And then I have... You have Batman I, in. I, I'm curious because I think I have it at three. I have it in cinematography, I have it in sound, I have it in visual effects, and then I have it in hair and makeup. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. I don't have it in sound, but I can see where you're coming from on that. 
for me, okay, I think that we could see the Fablemans overperform here. In past years, we've definitely seen some of those front runners that have died out later on getting a lot on nominations morning and then fizzling out as they go. Maybe the Fablemans could do that, but it's kind of already fizzled out a little bit at this point. Otherwise, I could totally see All Quiet on the Western Front either overperforming or underperforming. I just yeah, don't think definitely. it's going to be exactly what people think. I think it's going to be a complete surprise how All Quiet on the Western Front performs here. But without further ado, I think we can get into the Oscar nominations. So Ooh. we're going to go with our first category, hair and makeup. Okay. Okay. I've got the first one here. The Whale. No All surprise. Right, so they're not in ABC order. Okay. Oh, I'm going from the bottom. Oh, you're going bottom up. Okay, bottom I'm up. I'm going okay. bottom Whale. up. Whale Elvis. makes sense. Okay, then I feel really good here. Black Panther, uh, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. I do not feel good. The Batman. And? All Quiet on the Western Front. <sighs> I didn't get it. Okay, so there's no Amsterdam there, but that looks like the presumed top five. That looks like what I kind of expected. Four out of five yeah. there. I feel good about four out of five. Okay, so the next category I got three out of got... five, so you're off to three a better start than me. Okay. Okay. Uh, next category we have is film editing. Top Gun Maverick. Makes no sense. Surprise. Tar. So something's going to miss. Tar. Wow. Everything Ever All at Once. Okay. Elvis. No Fablements. No Fablements. And Banshees. God damn it. God damn it, Dylan. I had this lineup. I had this lineup, uh. and then I switched out Tar for All Quiet. Yeah. I had Banshees and took out All Quiet, uh, so I feel you there. I did not have Tar, though, so uh, that is a, a good pull, I think. I think uh, I, we were just talking about how a movie feels low getting nominations, and I said, oh, I only have Tar with four. That feels yeah. kind of low for a Best Picture top five movie, top six movie, and here it is, overperforming, snagging and editing. I wonder if it will overperform and snag something else once we get to one of the it acting It could categories. also get cinematography or supporting actress, and yep. we'll have to see about that. I'm looking for supporting actress. Visual effects. This should be be an easy five. Okay, let's see if it's... (laughs) They have not announced visual effects yet, so we're going to skip this and go back to it. Um, Original score. For original score, fucking hell, The Fablemans. Okay, so my Woman King pick did not power through. (laughs) Yeah! Everything ever all at once. Okay. Oh, shit. Oh my god, I realized Something what they misses. snubbed. I realized what they snubbed. Pinocchio. I realized what they snubbed. Pinocchio. They no snubbed display. Pinocchio. No display. The Banshees wait, of the wait, Sheeran. Wait. No, woman, no woman talking. <gasps> oh. <laughs> it's getting zero. It, it, it's going to miss screenplay now, isn't it? Uh, it's not going to miss screenplay. I'm, I refuse to believe that. This doesn't look well for it to get into oh, screenplay. God. Babylon. Okay. And all quiet on the Western Front. Such a such a interesting lineup right there. Um, what? Wow. Oh. Right. So Fablements okay. is in. All Quiet was in. Everything Everywhere, Babylon, and Banshees. You said were there five? Yeah. So All Quiet, Babylon, Banshees of Inisherin, Everything Everywhere. And Fablements are the top five for original score. How do you give John Williams a nomination for that shit, man? He's John I, Williams. I mean, I, I guess we should have seen it coming. I love the movie. What did he do there? He should have been disqualified just for the use of prior classical music. Like, I hate the double standard here. That means that scores like Arrival in 2016 are disqualified. And then the Fablements makes it through here despite the most pivotal moments of the movie... Ugh. Ugh. Okay. It makes sense, though, because he got in for all the Star Wars sequels, so I guess we should have just not been, like, denying it. Like, oh, there's no way, because, like, it's the same thing of this. But we saw all season, people who vote for a score don't care, because they kept giving awards to Tar, even though that's all prior use of score as well. My god. Ugh. But, okay, clearly, clearly All Quiet is not underperforming. Well, it just missed. Something didn't well, it? it? I mean, it did. It missed editing. It did miss editing. That I think that's bigger than score. It has score. It has makeup. That's still. It's getting a lot of below the line stuff. Okay, yeah. visual effects still not announced. So we're going to skip it again and go to live action short film. 
Um, so my big swing for the fence here is that uh, Alice Rohrwacher's film Le Pupil was number one on Gold Derby. I did not pick it. Mm-hmm. So let's see if that pans out for me. The Red Suitcase, great. Fantastic film. Cool. Night Ride. Okay, Night I did not Ride. have that one. That had is that one of your odds. bottom ones? Okay. Um, no, what, it was one of my middle ones. It's okay. transphobic. <laughs> it's transphobic. Okay, okay then now I remember. Um, I, I didn't remember the title, but okay. Uh, now I remember my what swing for the fences did not play off. Le Pupil is here. Alice Rohrwalker. Okay. Ivalu. Okay. Wait, that that's, no that's an interesting one. Oh, you're right. There is no Nakam. Okay, Ivalu, that's it. That's from a prior winner. And an Irish goodbye. Three so I literally got two out of five here. I got two out of five, and that does not feel good. Okay, I've got visual effects right here, and I'm just going to read from the top down. All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar the Way of Water, The Batman, Black Panther Wakanda Forever, Top Gun Maverick. So we're missing something here. Oh, we're 13 missing 13 lives. lives. 13 lives. And a Marvel movie got it, even though a Marvel movie missed VES, Miss BAFTA, and all Now of we that. know this is a future year note. Don't doubt Marvel, even if it misses VES. That's a solid top five, though. I'm totally fine with that. I would have loved to see Nope surprise here. Um, but ultimately, I'm glad that I swapped out at the last minute my Jurassic World pick for All Quiet on the Western Front. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's move forward to the next one is animated short film. Okay. Um, first one, an ostrich told me the world is fake, and I think I cool. believe it. Good, we both got that. My Year of Dicks. Two for two. That's going to be funny to hear them read on live TV. I can't wait for that. Um, Ice Merchants. Ice Merchants. Okay. I'm going to miss one here. Oh, that means, that means that they missed It's Nice in Here. True, yep. Okay. The Flying Sailor. Wow. So, a top two is missing. <gasps> oh, New Moon is missing. Coleman Domingo missed. <sighs> so and the boy, the, the, boy, mole, the mole, the fox. the fox, and the horse. So that means the boy, the mole, the fox, and the horse is winning this award. Yep. All right. Like, three for five. 100%. Again. Lesson learned here. Don't doubt National Film Board of Canada. Even when they have a relatively weak short film, it's still going to make it in. Okay. Next one we've got is Achievement in Sound. Let's check this out. Top Gun Maverick. Um, Elvis. Oh, shit. We skipped everything ever all at once. The Batman. Avatar The Way of Water. All Quiet on the Western Front. You went five for five there. I I did. Five for five, and I went four for five because... Oh, does this mean I have to say that everything ever all at once is not winning editing? It does. Technically, yes. Shit. Shit, dude. Oh. Hey, you got the score nomination. That bodes for strength. That feels rough. Okay, costume design. I swung for the fences here with Glass Onion. You went everything everywhere, and I think we have four out of five of the same otherwise. Yes. Mrs. Harris goes to Paris. Yeah. Okay, everything ever all at once. Okay. So we skipped Glass Onion. You got it right, I got it wrong there. That's good. Elvis. Elvis. Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Babylon. And Babylon. Five for five. Five, four, five. You know what I just noticed, though? What's up? Woman King has missed everything so far. Mm -hmm. It missed here, it missed score, it missed makeup. It will continue to, and it'll only get actress. I don't have it for actress, so. Well, it's getting actress. If someone misses actress, it's Michelle Williams. Okay, cinematography is next. Tar over performance? Oh, God! I had it! I had tar, and I swapped it out. So Tar got God in. God damn it. Tar got in. Tar. So Avatar. Empire of Light. Elvis. Bardo. False Chronicle of a Handful of Truths. Bardo. <gasps> oh, 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 oh. Maverick. All quite Maverick. Different. Maverick's not here. Maverick's not here. What? <laughs> Maverick. So wait, what's winning? Tough gun. Tough gun. Oh. oh what's I guess. I guess All Quiet on the Western Front is winning. I that I guess be... All Quiet on the Western Front's winning. Oh my gosh. So wait, no Maverick, no Batman. No, no Avatar, Maverick, no Batman. Bardo, no Avatar. All Quiet, Tar. Tar, Elvis, uh, Empire of Light, Bardo, All Quiet. They went three out of five with ASC. Bardo's they missed here. Batman. They missed Top Gun Maverick. You know what that means? I'm Maverick's shocked. Not, Maverick's not a Best Picture winner anymore. 
No, Maverick can't win Best Picture because that was one of its only wins. Oh my gosh! You know, as as much wow. as it hurts for no Batman here, and as much as it kind of hurts with no Maverick, all is redeemed because this world is not too cruel for Mateo. Bardo has at least one nomination, and hopefully no, this I, keeps I going for a second. I remember when we saw it, and we were like, that needs to get a cinematography nomination, yeah. and then it just really seemed like it wasn't going to happen. And when ASC happened, that was the one that stood out in the lineup as like, that doesn't make sense for for a nomination. Let's take that out. Well, Whoa. Okay, so I got like... I think I got three out of five here. Maybe two. I got out of five. three. I missed I'm Avatar not doing and Maverick well today. I'm not doing well this morning. I'm okay. not as well. Next category: production design. Okay, Avatar's the missed a lot so far. The Fablemans. Okay, one for one. Elvis. Two for two. Babylon. Threes. Avatar: The Way of Water. And all quiet. All quiet on the Western Front fives across it's, the board it's making it everywhere jeez jeez okay i didn't put in i forget what i had that missed here because i didn't have all quiet black panther everything everywhere black panther black panther okay yeah okay so gold derby's number one missed yeah wow well, it shouldn't have been number one <laughs> it really okay that's okay this is a big one next director all right okay let's see I made a last minute switch. I think okay, when we when we talked, I had Lerman and then I put in Edward Berger, who I think is making it with all of these nominations now. Um, yeah. But then He's at the last Cameron. minute I I swapped him out for Sarah Polly. So Oh, well, that's not going to pan out. Yeah, the she score. Missed score. Miss, yeah. Well, holy shit. It's holy Lerman. shit. No, Wait, it's not. No, Spielberg. No, no Spielberg. it's not. Oh my god. No, I, I, I haven't even started. I haven't even started. Are you going Ruben top Ostland. to bottom? I'm going oh, bottom to top. We missed oh Spielberg, gosh. Ruben Ostland. We we have to eat our shit because we said all year this is not happening. It's not happening. Todd Field, Tar. So, oh my god. Oh, wait, no, no, no. It's by movie. It's by movie. Steven Spielberg, The Fablemans. Oh, that's dumb. Okay. Okay. Uh, Daniels, Everything Ever, All at Once. And McDonough. Martin McDonough, Banshees of Inishirin. Okay, so we both got four for five, but Ruben Ostland is here, which means it's in screenplay, which means Dolly got it, which I'm very happy for that, uh, and then it means it's in picture. It's got to be in picture. If it's in director, it's got to be in picture. Not necessarily, because... It's, another round. For this movie, that is a huge over overperformance. Like huge, it is huge overperformance. It is. If Dolly's in, it's in picture. If Dolly misses, it's not. That's that's how I'm gonna look at it. Because th there's been international mm -hmm. movies that still miss picture, even though they got the director nomination. I know those weren't in years of ten, but still, I don't know if another round was in the top ten, and Cold War definitely was not in the top ten. No, and for reference. I've spoken very negatively about Triangle of Sadness's chances in previous videos. That's about the chances. I love the movie. I love the movie, but I haven't been able to like reckon with the fact that it's actually like an Oscar contender this year. Not reckon with. I just haven't believed it because mm -hmm. of just how divisive it is, how much some people absolutely loathe this movie. So if you see me in previous videos talking about like, oh my god, no way in hell is that happening. That's because I didn't think it was happening, not because I don't like it. I love yeah. Triangle of Sadness. I'm very happy to see this nomination right here. Um, wow. Okay. So I I guess it's still Daniels or Spielberg. Okay. This is a big one. Our next one is Actress in a Leading Role. Okay. Michelle Yeoh, Everything Ever All at Once. Michelle Williams, The Fablemans. I didn't swap her out. I didn't two two. swap her out. I kept her at 100 to 1. Okay. Okay. Ooh. Before you go. There's three people with a D last name. One of them's missing. Yeah. One of them's missing for sure. It's going to be Diarmis. It's going to be Davis. It's going to be Diarmis. It's going to be Diarmis. Ha! 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 Buddy, wait. two of them are missing. Two of them wait, are missing. Wait, wait, wait. Two wait, of them wait. are missing. <laughs> wait. Don't, don't tell me there's an R last name. name. Don't tell me there's an R last name. <laughs> Ryan and Bro got in. <laughs> No. Sorry, let's no. just take a moment here. No. To appreciate that Andrea Riceboro. No. 
is here for two Leslie. No. Let's just take a moment to appreciate that. We're only at three out of five. So right now, we've got Davis and Blanchett left, I think. I think. Uh, we have Anna Blanchett, Diarmis, Davis, blonde. Ben Anna Weiler. Diarmis, blonde. Yay! Kate Blanchett, tar. Which means we Wh- snubbed both of the black actresses in this category. That is a horrible look. That is a really, really bad look. Oh, wow. No Deadweiler. No Davis. Well, I was right about and Davis. Andrea but Riseborough got here. Davis was out. Davis was definitely the sixth to me. The thing is, when you saw those campaign posts for Riseborough, they said Deadweiler was in. They said Davis was in. They said don't vote for them. Vote for her. And we saw that happen here because people voted for Blanchett. They voted for Yo. They voted for Diarmis. That's your top three. Williams carries in over because the Oscars, of course, going to nominate Spielberg's mom. And the fifth slot was what was open to me. I thought it was dead wild because how much people love this performance. But people didn't watch this movie. We saw that with women talking, missing score. It's probably missing screenplay as well after that. And Till's not getting in here. Yeah. Wow. I'm no, not I, looking forward to Twitter here in about 20 minutes. A- admittedly. I am not a huge fan of Danielle Deadweiler's performance, but this snub really, really feels awful. Um, it just doesn't. It doesn't feel right. It really doesn't feel right. And like I got, I know we have our disagreements on Ana Diarmas here. I really think that this is maybe the worst nominee ever in this category. Like I really, really think this is a bad performance that just does not. Like again. I appreciate Ana de Armas. I just think that the movie is so misguided and her performance mm-hmm. can't escape that. Well. I haven't seen Too Leslie, though. I'll watch it this week. It, I've heard uh, yeah. it's a small movie with a giant heart. You know what this means now? Oscar campaign has changed forever. It really has. This has proven that you can use to your advantage at the very last minute in a blitz campaign. And that's what they did with Too Leslie. They did a blitz campaign. The Whale did it to a similar, like, a little bit bigger. But Mm -hmm. The Whale was another one where they didn't do any advertising until the last moment, and they peaked right at the right time. So Leslie basically did for a nomination what Coda did for a win. Yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Wow. I'm still just in shock that To Leslie actually showed up. I I guess I know what I'm watching tonight. (laughs) I guess so. Oh, um, okay. Wow. Well, Woman King's getting zero nominations wow. now, and uh, yeah, Women Till King is has as well. Zero. That's incredible. Okay, um, actor in a leading role. So this is the big one. We feel like we know four out of five, although we could be completely shocked by it. We feel like we know four out of five. What is number five? Let's see. Bill Nye, living. So that knocks Paul out... Mescal. Paul Mescal, okay. after son. Solo, um, solo uh, acting. Nah, um, weird, yeah. but... Brendan Fraser, The Whale. Farrell. Colin Farrell, The Banshees of Inishirin. And our winner... And Austin Butler, Elvis. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, no. No, 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 no. Austin Butler's not winning. But, he okay. Win. Um, I'll admit, I'll take the L on Paul Mescal. I've been saying for so long that it just doesn't... Like, he doesn't feel like a, a nominee here, but he's deserving. I'm very happy for him um i think that the film is great i just it just felt too small uh for me but like it makes hey. it doesn't make sense but it's a good nomination it's a very inspired nomination albeit one that doesn't really make sense after Sun is not the smallest leading performance this year no because there's a smaller movie with a bigger heart that got a nomination yeah yep. okay uh let's go to original screenplay next it's Triangle of Sadness. We knew that in top four. Tar, The Fablemans, Everything Ever All at Once, and The Banshees of Inisherin. Easy um, peasy. Yeah, I I was clinging to my, like, oh my god, they'll go with Elvis, not Triangle. But Triangle is going to vastly overperform. It's got to get Dolly now. It's got to get in picture. And I think, you know, that's I really wonder awesome. what it takes out. I know I had Babylon <sighs> at my 10 slot. All Quiet seems safe. And I guess whale could, but we haven't got to any of the whale categories yet. So I yeah, guess so Babylon we're at or the whale's out. Adapted screenplay next, and okay. my big question here is: Do we see women talking? And if not, did anyone watch the goddamn movie? Okay, 
Adapted screenplay. Women talking. Thank God. Top Gun Maverick. No whale. No whale. No whale. No whale. No whale in hell. Did they just skip that? For Top Gun Maverick and Living. Okay. Glass Onion. No, she said. All Quiet on the Western Front. No, she said. Wow. I had this lineup right two days ago, and I was gaslit into believing Top Gun Maverick would not make it here after I've been predicting it since May. Since we saw the movie, I've had it in my adapted lineup. And yeah, I, took it I out. had it out. I I got three out of five here because I had The Whale and I had... Um, God, what did I have? Uh, I had She Said. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, I had The Whale and She Said. Um, and, yeah, but if I... That's the thing. I would have only gotten three out of five because if I put in Top Gun Maverick, it would have been over Living, not over those two. I would have put Maverick in over She Said. Yeah. Okay, so let's look at this lineup. What's our winner here? Because to me, even if Women Talking doesn't get Best Picture, it has to win over All Quiet or over Top Gun. There's mm. no way that those two can win. They're not going to give a war movie or an action movie screenplay. They're not going to give it a win. Women Talking has to win here. It, it has to. Have to. I, I feel like I'm coping. But I, I, it kind of has to win. All like, Quiet there's is... There's no way they give it to Top Gun or All Quiet. It's it's All Quiet or Women Talking. All Quiet has, based on a famous book, based on a previous Best Picture winner, yeah. and it's... I mean, it has dialogue scenes. It's not like it's just straight war for two and a half hours. Um, so I would say Women Talking is the front runner, but that stat of where you're not in picture really does stand out, and I don't but see this what making if picture. it is... What if it is? If it is, Women Talking wins this category with, with, with ease. But I don't know. I feel like All Quiet's going to win the BAFTA. I am still going to predict this, even if it gets snubbed in Best Picture. Even if it does, I'm still predicting Women Talking. I don't see All Quiet winning here. Like, well, I, she I said, just don't see it. She said missed here and adapted, so that means Mulligan's missing supporting actress for probably Dolly. And also, okay, if, if All Quiet wins screenplay... We have to take it very seriously as a win contender for Best Picture. I yeah, I honestly think it's probably I don't know. I would have said it's a Maverick slot now, but Maverick got in here, and Maverick missed cinematography. Yeah. Okay. So next one we've got is animated feature, Turning Red, The Sea Beast. No Wendell and Wild. We put in The Sea Beast. Wow. Sure. Sure. Let's let's do that. Puss in Boots. The Last Wish. Okay. Marcel the Shell with Shoes On and Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. Yeah. It, it checks out. Sea Beast is one that I know a lot of people are predicting early on. It well, just came and went yeah. and they didn't do anything with it. It We went four out of five here. Uh, yeah. The only difference is that we uh, we had put Wendell and Wilde instead of the Sea Beast. And we like I think we talked that the Sea Beast was possible because it got that fifth slot at the, uh, at the Annie's in the studio animation category. Mm-hmm. So basically, they just swapped out Wendell and Wilde, um, which we thought was the the one that would go on here with Sea Beast. Yeah, so. I, like I said, it makes sense. It's just a weird one because if we want to talk about my, uh, if we want to talk about Netflix not campaigning movies, they didn't campaign the Sea Beast. They didn't campaign My Father's Dragon. They did campaign Wendell and Wilde. So it seems like even Netflix was not expecting this, but it's a very yeah. well animated film, so you can give it that. And it's a good movie, just... With this being like a general like voting category, it's just a very weird pick because that wasn't a very popular movie, if I recall right, on Netflix. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I I mean, I'm not a huge fan of the movie, but it's it's certainly beautifully animated, um, and I'd put it on the same level as Wendell and Wild, so I'm happy that it's there. Over, no, I, I like they're both on the same level for me, so I would have been happy with either of them here. Um, but, you know, I still wish that they could have gone off track and gone with something like Little Nicholas, uh, a little bit crazier, a little bit wild. Uh, okay, next category is Best Original Song. This is a life! Everything, everywhere, all at once. Something misses. It's Pinocchio, Something isn't it? misses. Um, Natu Natu from RRR. Um, Lift Me Up from Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. Hold, my, Hold hand. my hand from Top Gun Maverick. So it's and applause. Tell it like woman. So chop up out. Missed. Yeah, checks out. But we we of said course, that. Motherfucking Diane Warren is here. Yeah, I mean, 
we did predict that if something misses, it is the Pinocchio song. We were just kind of wrong yeah. about what would take its spot. I know maybe you predicted That's this so is a That's so sad. Lie. It's so sad that, that, oh my God, I can't believe Pinocchio only got one nomination at the end of it all. Yeah. At the end of it all, only one nomination for Pinocchio. That's heartbreaking. But hey, Natu Natu is here. That's fantastic. I'm so it's glad winning. for Natu Natu. And This Is a Life is a huge overperformance. And this means Mitski is a goddamn Oscar nominee. That's so cool. That's so cool. Um, okay, next category up documentary feature. So let's get big into misses could happen. Big these misses could documentaries. Happen. Yeah, this is where we might see some huge shocks. Like Fire of Love, All the Beauty and the Bloodshed. Are you starting nice. top or bottom? Bottom. So bottom should be Navalny. Navalny. Okay. It's winning. It's winning. Yeah. A house made of splinters. Wow. Okay. I've heard a lot of people predicting that, and I was like, no way. Wow. It's too small. No, so I didn't out. think it was going to because it's like, okay, Fire of Love. Yep. Um, all the beating, the bloodshed, and all that breathes. So no bad axe. So, yeah, I there was no bad axe. There's no territory. What's I feel it. like there should have been, yeah, Descendant. Descendant Moon is Age the one Daydream then. was the other one, but I know Moon neither Age of us were that. Yeah, we weren't predicting it because, like, the whole Welcome to Chechnya debacle, where just because you get shortlisted in other categories doesn't mean that you'll make it into, uh, into documentary. Okay, documentary short is next. So, yeah, I'm trying to think. We'll, we'll rush through this. Stranger at the Gate. I said this Boom. one. I Me said too. it. It had 100 to 1 odds. And we're in. said this one. Okay. The Martha Mitchell effect. That's cool. That actually makes sense because there was the TV show about her this year, Gaslit. Um, mm-hmm. So it makes sense. There's more attention on her. How do you measure a year? Two Call out. For... Okay. And the Elephant Whisperers. Flag Makers. They snubbed, they snubbed the front runner. The front runner was the Flag Makers. It's not here. So and what wins now? Um, so the Elephant Whisperers has to win. Okay. I feel like it has to. How do you measure a year? I finally watched that the other day. It's so sweet. God damn it, it's so sweet. Um, but yeah, I think the winner here is Elephant Whisperers. Maybe Stranger at the Gate. Very, very possible Stranger at the Gate. I improved from last year. I got three out of five in each category. Last year, I got one out of four in each. And that's crazy to consider. I was like 80th overall in Gold Derby, and I got one out of four in every short category. Wow. Yeah. No, I think we both did like three out of five in each of them this year. Mm-hmm. Um, that means oh. we're to international, isn't it? We are, but they uh, they messed up the international category here, and oh, wow. they just copied the documentary shorts again. So international feature, elephant whispers, haul out. Uh, no, so <laughs> here I can I can Google international feature. Yeah, nominations. Google it and yeah. <laughs> uh is this the oh, actual no. one okay never mind never mind i apologize that was clayton davis's predictions not the actual ones that i just pulled up okay i, I was okay, like what God. what is here because it had holy spider and i was like no way uh but that, that was not holy the spider actual... is one of the best movies of the year so i i have it pulled up in another tab it. here to watch but i have not actually watched it um okay all right international Let's feature <gasps> Uh, <laughs> this is why you stick to your gut, kids. EO is here. EO's here? EO, EO! is here. Yeah! That's And great. then the other four is probably the consensus top four, because you had a quiet girl. You had... Nice. Argentina 1985. God damn it. God damn it. I swung for the fences and... Ugh. God. You, ha- you have... Uh... <laughs> you have all Quan the Western Front. Yeah. And your final one, if the deadline page wants to load, every time I click it, it just freezes. If um, it's not decision to leave, that's crazy. But close well, I missed. Saw, I saw the five and then it the page froze and now I can't scroll it. So uh let's just look at the gold derby ones and uh no, close this in, decision to leave got missed. Oh! So oh! the long wraparound here is we were right, no decision to leave, and we called that months oh. ago, and EO was in. Donkey supremacy is real. Oh, okay, well, we know someone who's going to be royally pissed off about that. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am. Is this for the better movie? Deserves to be here. 
Like, okay, so just, again, it's All Quiet, Argentina, Close, EO, and uh, The Quiet Girl. Quiet Girl, Girl. yeah. I got a three out of five. Wow. I, I okay. took out I EO got, last minute for Quiet Girl. I got three out of five. Um, well, you you still you changed it for one that was right. So I got All Quiet, I got uh, Close, and then I got the Quiet Girl. So yeah, I, I got three out of five. Yeah. And then Donkey City made it in over the masterpiece that is Bardo, and Argentina 1985 got in over Decision to Leave. Wow. Bardo, one nomination, not hey. international feature. Hey, we're not done yet. We're not, we're not, <laughs> we're done, not yet. done yet. Okay. <laughs> okay. Supporting actor. That is, uh, that's up next. Okay. Uh, Ki Hui Kwan, Everything Ever All at Once. No surprise yep. there. No surprise there. Barry Keoghan, The Banshees of the um, Sheeran. Um, Pitt, Redmayne, Pit? both out. Because we just jumped Who's from... five? Is Judd Hirsch here? Judd uh, Hirsch! Judd Hirsch, The Fablements. Judd Hirsch, The Fablements. So no Dano. They're not doing double nominations. No, they, they could do double, double nominations. I don't they could think do they triple, will. double nominations. I don't think they will. <gasps> Brian Tyree Henry, Causeway. <laughs> what? And then That's that means good. Gleason That's good. is our last one. Brendan Gleason is the last one. Good, they, good. They pulled a Katrina Balfe and Judy Dench. They did, and that's a good they one too. It. They denched it. Hirsch is so good, and so is Tyree Henry. Let's go. Hirsch is amazing. This is a great top five. It this is. This is a great top five. Brian Tyree Henry and Causeway, I never actually believed that they would do it, but they I did. took him off my that's 10. Fantastic. He's not even in my 10 anymore. That's <laughs> and he got so in. good. Oh my uh, god, that's well, a great, that's an inspired nomination. That you know what else this means? nominations we have here. Going what? forward, the people that look like they're Jared Leto are. doesn't matter what they get. They can get BAFTA. They could get SAG. They can get Golden Globe. They can get more. It doesn't matter. That performance still is not getting in with the Oscars. They don't care for the overtly Beatty campaign role. Yeah. I still haven't wow. seen Good Nurse. And this probably means I never will see Good Nurse because it missed. But uh, the, pit one, the Pit one doesn't oh bode well for God. picture. That, to me, says that babylon is out for triangle and the whale miss adapted so i feel like that 10th slot is still open so we'll have to see what ends up getting that 10 is it still babylon we'll is it see. the whale is it women talking is it something else yeah okay this is that's crazy okay um actress in the supporting role stephanie sue okay everything ever all at once now it's jamie lee there. curtis Everything Ever All at Once. Double, double nominations. Double, double okay. nominations. Okay. Carrie Condon, The Banshees of so Inishiran. Top five. Hong Chow, The Whale. Angela Bassett, Bassett. Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. Top five. Five for five. That is fantastic. Um, I, I am go five so five. happy. Uh, who did you not I, I did not have Sue. I didn't do double doubles. Right. Uh, and you had who in I had Mulligan. I had Mulligan, yeah. Right, but, right, right, right. You know who's not here? Dolly's not here after a screenplay oh, and a shit. director Dolly's nomination. Dolly's not here. Oh, no. I actually, I feel really bad about that. But, like, like it makes sense to me, but I feel really bad about it at the okay. same time. Okay, so, picture, before you read it, I think we yeah. can say there's eight movies that we know are going to be here. The Consensus 7 yeah. plus All Quiet. Yes. We know that. After what seeing nine and ten? the rest of the nominations, what are you predicting for 9 and 10? I have triangle at nine, and I don't know what to do with ten. Okay, after the other nominations, I'm just I'm gonna stick to my guns and say Babylon and Women Talking. I'm I think gonna I'm gonna go to triangle it. and Babylon. Okay. I think Whale Missing Let's Screenplay see. is big. Women Talking. <laughs> I stuck to my guns. I stuck uh. to my guns. Women Talking is a motherfucking Best Picture nominee. With one and other it wins nomination. adapted. There you go. There you it go. Wins adapted. Easy. Triangle oh. of sadness. No Babylon. No Babylon. No Babylon. Triangle of sadness and no whale. That's that feels good because I took whale out last minute just to be like, yeah, okay. Unless something else misses, which could be Avatar. We'll see. Whale didn't make it because okay. you just skipped past it. Whale didn't make up. Okay, so Top Gun Maverick is number three. Mm-hmm. Four, Tar. Yep. Five, The Fablemans. 
Six Elvis. Six, everything ever all at oh, once. Yeah. Seven, Elvis. Eight, the Banshees of Inisherin. <gasps> oh, no, sorry. <laughs> nothing missed. Nothing missed. Um, yeah, you just hit B for Babylon. Avatar the Way of Water. Yeah. And All Quiet on the Western Front. So just to recap, so we're, we're missing Babylon here. All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar the Way of Water, Banshees of Inisherin. Elvis, Everything Ever All at Once, The Fablemans, Tar, Top Gun Maverick, Triangle of Sadness, and Women Talking. Good lineup, good lineup. I, uh, I'm i I'm pretty happy with that lineup. I am too. I'm mad at myself because I took out Women Talking last night at 11 p.m. to put in Babylon. Uh, I lost my 66 to 1 odds on Gold Derby. And that sucks because That's... this is my double point category as well, and I have 100 to 1 odds for four movies in here so it would have been very very juicy i had maverick yeah. i had elvis um i have avatar all at 101 odds so it would have been boosted up pretty well but alas it was not meant to be babylon it's destined to be uh looked at in like five years like how did this movie not get in the picture but right now makes sense and it also makes sense because there's no movie here say what you want about elvis but there's no movie here that's critically panned yeah yeah, uh, well, Triangle of Sadness is like very mixed with critics. And I that's would say why, that and Elvis that's why all are year like long. I've been saying range. Triangle wasn't going to make it in because I was like, not all year long. Because I remember when it first premiered at Cannes, I went on like Reddit being like, oh my god, this could totally be a Best Picture nominee. And I got roasted. I got downvoted into oblivion for suggesting that Triangle of Sadness could happen. But then afterwards, when I saw that the reviews weren't going up for it and everything, I just was like, yeah, there's no way it's making it in. Uh, this type of movie needs that sort of broad support, and it doesn't have it. But I guess, here you go. Here you go. This is Don't Look Up of this year. And I say that as someone who loves Don't Look Up and loves Triangle of Sadness. Okay, yeah. first take, looking at this category, how would you rank the nominees? <laughs> well, out there, people, do not get mad at me, because I'm going to rank them in a way that you do not like them. <laughs> Avatar, Elvis, Everything Everywhere, Maverick, Fablemans, no, Women Talking, Fablemans, All Quiet, Tar, Banshees, Triangle. Okay, okay. I had probably film Twitter's favorites at the bottom. Yeah, that's why I said don't get mad because I have a lot of the devoted fan bases of Tar, of Banshees, of Triangle as my bottom three. But hey, just know this. If the whale was here, the whale would be 10. Yeah. The whale deserves 10. It deserves It deserves 11. <laughs> it's not It's not here, which is good. Thank God. Um, All right. What about okay. you? Um, so I would go... Oh, I just want to point out. They went 7 out of 10 with PGA. That's like... That's wild. They never do that. Mm-hmm. They never do that. Okay. So my ranking would be Everything Ever All, All at Once, Women Talking... Then uh, Triangle of Sadness, All Quiet on the Western Front, The Fablemans, and then Avatar The Way of Water, Top Gun Maverick, um, sorry, no, not, uh, yeah, Top Gun Maverick, Banshees of Inisherin, Elvis, and Tar in last place. Tar in a distant last place. I don't think I have a distant here, because I think... Four, I mean, three of my top five movies of the year all made it, so that made it kind of easy. And then yeah. you had some other stuff. I think I have four of my top ten made it in. And then, yeah. So, I don't know. Yeah. This is a very good picture lineup. I know we had this discussion uh, throughout our Discord uh, just with... How, what was this year like in film? I think this is the best post-pandemic year of film. I think this blows 2020 out the water. And I wasn't a huge fan of last year overall. This year, to me, is so much better, so much deeper, and... Uh, it has higher highs and it goes down further. Like the ten here, I would say my least favorite movie here is Triangle of Sadness, and I give that like a, sh- a week seven out of ten. Most yeah. years, my number ten or whatever, my bottom for best picture is not a week seven out of ten. Like last yeah. year, I think it was like a five, and there was like two movies there that out of five. Mm-hmm. No, Tar for me is a strong six, and that's my weakest in the lineup. But of this top ten, I give six of these movies a ten out of ten. Mm-hmm. So you know. I'm I'm totally cool with with that. Tar, it's my least favorite. I do need to rewatch it, 
Um, but overall, you know, I'm really happy that we have women talking. I'm incredible. I'm over the moon about women talking about Triangle of Sadness. Honestly, I think that this is a great, great lineup, and I, I'm really pleased. I'm very pleased. Um, especially because Triangle of Sadness making it over Babylon in my lineup makes this infinitely better, because I'm not a huge Babylon fan, whereas I am a huge Triangle of Sadness fan. Yeah, Babylon stands. I'm with you. We can cry. We can be sad. Just know that in 10 years, this will be looked at as a much, a much better movie. Okay, let's just reflect on some of these things. Women Talking got picture with only one other nomination. And how did it miss score? How the hell did that miss score? That doesn't make I mean, any goddamn sense. I guess one complaint I've heard about Women Talking score online is that it's just the same note, just in like eight different speeds. Uh, I don't agree mm. with that, but yeah, it was a pretty a popular, a pretty popular take. Uh, it had a few thousand likes. I know that's not like a huge thing, but for a movie that's kind of small like that, I don't know. Um, yeah. W- and that would be my take. The also the the score and sound and so, the score and song branches kind of do their own thing sometimes. So, women talking misses Bab not Babylon. Uh, Pinocchio misses. They make sense, but also there's yeah. stuff I wasn't going to predict. Um, Fablemans obviously probably should have been in. We were just like, there's no way, there's no way. And what were the others? I know it's a Banshee's Babylon, and the last two were Everything Everywhere and All Quiet. Um, um yeah, All Quiet. And I mean, if you're of all Which quiet, I never, love the all quiet score. <laughs> like do. if everything everywhere is your best picture winner, it's going to overperform. So sure, take something out there. So we'll say at minimum, Fableman took out Woman King for me, or whatever our fifth slot was. It takes yeah. that out, and then if everything everywhere is a best picture contender, it needs to overperform. Then either Pinocchio or Women Talking or Banshees would have had to miss. But Banshees is also a top picture candidate, so we'll say Pinocchio drops there, and then. All Quiet also mm-hmm. overperforming, a move that underperformed, Women Talking, boom, and there's your five. Wow. Uh, at least okay. look at it, like, strategically. Can we just talk about how... So, nominations leader. I had said everything ever at ten nominations. You said it was going to be eight. Mm-hmm. The nominations leader is everything ever with eleven nominations. I mean, it got both sound... So I wasn't sound. even got confident both enough in it. Score and song, and boom... Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. And then All Quiet on the Western Front and Banshees both had nine nominations. Good for All Quiet on the Western Front. Like, that was the one where when it premiered at TIFF, everyone was like, this has to happen. This is so good. It has to happen. And then it was just radio silence as Netflix was like, hey, fuck this movie. And then it happened. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. No, this is... I'm overall very happy with nominations overall how do you feel i feel good i am a little disappointed myself because there's some stuff like throughout the year i was champion and then i dropped it last minute like maverick and adapted um i'm blanking on some i mean i had sue in for the longest over jamie lee and then i switched it around globes time and then i was just like oh they're not double nominating i had hirsch all season and then once daniel got sag i dropped him as well so there's just some little stuff like that throughout I'm just upset that I didn't stick to my guns because, like, obviously there was a path for it and I just gave up too soon. Yeah, for the Hirsch thing, this is the second year in a row I've been burned by them nominating the older actor for a movie because Mm -hmm. last year I had Judi Dench for ages and for so long people were like, why the hell do you have Judi Dench? That makes no sense. Why do you have Judi Dench? They're not going to nominate her. And so I was like, okay, I'll switch her out. I'll take her out for Katrina Yeah. For ages this year, I was saying it was going to be Judd Hirsch, not Dano. And then it just made more sense for Dano because he'd had all the nominations before. But in the end, Dano still walks away without that Oscar nomination. When is Paul Dano going to get his Oscar nomination? I swear to God, he's so overdue for just a nomination at this point. You know, in another year, if Warner Brothers released Batman in the Wakanda Forever slot like they originally were going to do... How different would that movie's run be? Could have gotten score. Could have maybe gotten Dano. Don't think so, but that's... I think he would have been stronger for Batman than he would have been for Fablemans. I'll say that. Um, and there's some other categories he could have got. Because, I mean, if Maverick can get adapted, why couldn't Batman? 
But that's just me coping with the fact that Batman had an underperformance because that is a category I do want to talk about, about just not believing in yourself. There's two movies this year, maybe not the most, but definitely amongst the majority of people. I was a lot higher one than most people. I was saying from the get-go, Bardo is going to be nominated somewhere. Where? And I dropped it last minute from cinematography. I didn't keep it in. I had it in before ASC, and once ASC happened, I still had it in. But once BAFTAs happened, I took it out for Empire of Light. Obviously, Empire of Light got in, but I would much rather have my Bardo points, my Empire of Light points. Yeah. And lastly, or not lastly, there's two more I'm going to get to about just not believing in myself and giving up at the last minute. I didn't have the will and for adaptive screenplay until it got PGA. I didn't put it in all season. I had Maverick yeah. there. I had... Um, I had what someone else that I didn't put in. I had living there as well. I think I had the five for adapted in until PGA. And then I took out Maverick for or I took out Living for Whale. And then once Baptist happened, I took out Maverick for She Said. Boom. And the last category is international feature. I said he on the show last week. EO was in. And then I backtracked that off air. And guess who got in? The little donkey who could. Now what I want for the Oscars to do is hey. You already nominated all quite other places. You can give it another win somewhere else. Give EO the win here. He needs it. He deserves it. EO does deserve it. EO deserves it. EO always... EO just deserves everything. Okay, um, so I'm looking at everything right now. There are only two movies here that I have not seen. It's two Leslie... Motherfucker. <laughs> and oh, um, Tell It Like a Woman. Those are the only two movies in all the nominations that I haven't seen. What do you still have to watch, Dylan? I have those two as well. Um, I guess now I have to cave and watch Argentina 1985. Um, Quiet Girl as well. Um, I don't think that's actually can't come out here domestically yet. So it I don't has, think I would have yeah. had a chance. Oh, it did? I just yeah. never saw it then. Cool. And I think I've seen all the doc. No, I haven't seen all that briefs. Um, and then I guess I have some shorts mm. to watch. But for non-short categories, I think I have four. I think I did five. I have two international, one doc, two Leslie, and all um, to like woman. So I have for the at least above the line categories, the two random out of nowhere type movies. And then I have docs or a doc and two internationals. Yeah. Well, something I'm really looking forward to is once we've both finished watching all the films, if we get to that, it'd be great to do a video where we rank every single category. Well, I already know some categories we're going to be very different on because Best Actress very is one of those. Different. Yeah, Best Actress is going to be because I'm going to rank Anna Diarmas literally just like... Yeah, if we're talking about the movies as a subs, whole, Blonde's yeah. going to be four or five, but we're talking about the performances. She's above Williams. She's probably going to be above Ryan's bro for me. And I'll save the rest for later. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning in. This has been the Oscar nominations. Make sure you comment, leave us your thoughts, let us know what you guys think about these nominations. Are you happy with what happened? But as always, my name's Matt. And my name's Dill, and this is Fancy Film Ball.